Today, I'm going to show you how to create your very own broomstick servicing kit. The things we need to create our broomstick servicing kit is one wood box, and I have picked mine up at Hobby Lobby, but I'll try to put a link to a similar one in the description down below. I also picked up some remnant fabric from Hobby Lobby, and this is just a teal velvet, but you can use whatever type of fabric you would like. I have made a stencil with some removable vinyl on my Cricut, but I'll give you another option of how we can do this without a Cricut. We're going to use some peel and stick fabric fuse, as well as some antique gold rub and buff, some clips, a cutting mat, a straight edge, an X-Acto knife. Then we're also going to use some dry floral foam as well as a microfiber cloth. I have one of the long reach staplers. I have a knife to cut the floral foam with. Then we're going to need a kiwi conditioning oil tin as well as some fancy scissors, a compass, and then I have picked up one of these faux leather closures. And I also have some adhesive cork sheeting back here that is optional. You will need to print off the pages I have provided for a handbook of do-it-yourself broom care. And I have printed these double-sided. I created the cover for this as well as making the marble sheeting on the inside. I did not write the inside contents of this book. They were put together and edited by Kelly Marie. And I will try to put a link to her information down below, but I've had a hard time actually finding her. I'm also going to be using a bone folder, some Q-tips, and a hot glue gun. And finally, we will need our labels printed on sticker paper, and the link for this is in the description down below. Let's get started. Would you like a chance to win one of my potions? Then consider supporting me over on Patreon. All of my patrons have a chance to win a monthly potion bottle. Link is in the description down below. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to put our broomstick servicing kit logo onto the top of our wood box. So to do that, I have cut out on removable vinyl the broomstick servicing kit logo. I will put a card up above that will take you to my Fantastic Beasts ornament of Newt Scamander's case, and it will show you another technique to be able to transfer this logo on here, and then you could um, put the logo on there either by using a paint marker, a metallic marker, paint, whatever's your fancy. Another thing you could do is if you didn't want to actually paint it on or like we are going to rub and buff it on today, you could use just regular cutout vinyl and stick it on there, but I thought this would just kind of add a nice level to this. So I am just using a sheet of transfer paper that I have used several times. I like to reuse the sheets as much as I can, and I've stuck it on here just so that it pulls up all the middles of the O's and all of those things. And I actually removed the negative space on this, so that way we have a true stencil. So all we're going to do now is peel the backing paper off, making sure that none of our pieces stick to the backing paper and that it all sticks to the transfer sheet. And if it doesn't, I recommend you just rub the back with a burnisher and it will help it to adhere to the transfer sheet. And once we have it off, we have our little stencil here. We're going to go ahead and take our stencil and we're going to place it onto the top of our box. So now that I have this lined up, I'm going to go ahead and take my burnisher tool and really rub my removable vinyl stencil down. This part's really important if you're going to use a stencil like this because you don't want any paint if you're going to use paint or rub and buff or anything to seep underneath your stencil we want to keep those nice crisp lines so it's going to be really important that you rub it down really really well especially where the text is the rest of it doesn't matter so much it's just where the text is okay and i think that's pretty good so i'm going to go ahead and take my transfer tape off Once you have that peeled up, I like to just, again, I save everything. So this is the backing paper that it was originally on. I'm going to put that back on here and rub it down good. Just to make sure that when we lifted the transfer sheet, it didn't lift the edges of our stencil. Now I'm also going to go through here and just kind of hand press to make sure there's no little air bubbles or little pockets that maybe tried to hide from us rubbing it down. And I think it's seeming like it's pretty good. Okay, 
So once I feel confident in my stencil, we can then take and use our rub and buff. If you have never used rub and buff, I highly recommend it. It is an amazing product. So this is actually a wax metallic finish. It's not a paint. It's not just wax. I don't even know how to describe it. It's not even just like shoe polish or anything like that. Like it is a waxy substance that does become permanent. But when you put it on, it's workable. So you're able to kind of shine it up a little bit if you rub it with a cloth or a paper towel. And you can um, recolor anything. It could be plastic, wood, metal, you name it. So you could take an old picture frame, some antique finds. We're doing it on wood. You can use anything and you can use this on there. And it gives it a really great metallic finish. And this comes in a ton of different colors. So it comes in silver and gold and black and red and copper. You name it, it comes in it. But um, I love this stuff. I've been using it for a very, very long time. And I love how it can add a little bit of interest to a project really, really quickly. Especially antique finds, it can really shine them up and make them look like brand new. Now with this, a little goes a very long way. So all I'm going to do is squeeze a tiny bit out here. And I'm going to put it onto a Q-tip. Now, I could just use my finger if I wanted to. It's wax. It's not anything that's harmful. I could use um, a brush. Anything like that would work just fine. But I find a Q-tip is a really nice tool to use when you are doing something um, fine like text. So all we're going to do is just rub this onto our stencil to fill in our words. I just felt like this would give us a really great little simple wording on here. I know the one that Hermione got for Harry was a little pouch and it had a, it might have been silver writing that said broomstick servicing kit on it and she got it from the Daily Prophet for Harry. But I thought this would be more of an upscale version of a broomstick servicing kit. So that's why I wanted to go with the wood box. And I like the gold with the little gold metal corners that are on this one. I did also pick up a little black box. It is a tiny bit smaller than this one. And that one is cute too. But I just thought the size of this one felt appropriate to me. And it just um, definitely said, hey, I want to be a broomstick servicing kit when I picked it up at Hobby Lobby. So we're going to fill this in. And I will come back and show you how it looks when it's all filled in and how it looks when we pull the sticker off. Okay, so now that I have the whole thing rub and buffed, I'm now going to take my stencil off. And we should be left with our beautiful lettering. And now I just need to pick the middle letters out, but as you can see, we got this really great vintage looking lettering on here that's metallic but is really beautiful and I love that it's just kind of subtle and that it goes with the little metal pieces over here. So I'm going to go ahead and pull those middles out and we're going to let this cure while I show you how else we are going to transform this box into a broomstick servicing kit. While our box is curing, we're going to go ahead and start to put together some of our other pieces. So I decided to make the Fleetwoods handle polish out of an actual conditioning oil, which is um, made by Kiwi, who also makes a bunch of shoe polish. So as you can see, it's kind of a shoe polish kind of styled tin, and I actually thought this would be perfect. Um, it's the right size. I feel like it's what a broomstick handle polish would come in. And I thought, okay, we're just going to doctor this up with some new labels. So I have my little round circle label here. And I went around the outside edge with our uh, with a matching marker so it looks a little more finished. This is available on my website. So I'm going to peel the backing paper off. And then we're going to line this up. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. So we're going to rub that down. Now I could totally have spray painted this whole tin or rub and buffed this whole thing, but I actually didn't mind this gold color that was on here. Um, I just kind of think it looks a little bit more authentic that it's got that nice metal shine. And yes, the rub and buff would give us that too. But um, I didn't mind the color of the tin, but if you want to change it, go ahead. And I actually thought the barcode was kind of fun because, you know, when you're in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter at Universal, they scan things with a barcode. So I thought, okay, you know what, we'll go ahead and leave the barcode on there. It's just a nice little fun thing um, for the back of it. So we're going to go ahead and place the back sticker I have for you here. And once 
once we get this rubbed in. We can then do the outside handle, outside edge here. So I made a long strip that again has the handle polish, high finish Fleetwoods logo on here. And this one, I'm gonna just peel part of it off at a time just so then that way it's a little easier for me to make sure that I get it 100% lined up as I'm going around here. So now we have our Fleetwoods handle polish, high finish, with its super cute little label here, and the handle polish instructions on the back. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is take our little compass, and I found this in the jewelry section of um, Hobby Lobby. So you could also maybe find it in a camping section. It might be something you already have at home, but this one worked out really well. And this was in the like sewing notations area where there would be snaps and other closures and clasps. Um, it's a little, you know, belt type accessory that you could put on something to maybe gather a shirt or a jacket or something along those lines. So I thought this would be perfect to create the um, strap to put the compass onto your broomstick handle. So one of the things it talks about in the book is that it is a clip-on compass and then it also tells you to use a sticking charm to just make sure it doesn't fly off. But I thought using this would actually be a really nice little substitution for a clip-on. I felt like a uh, buckle on one would be just as good and again you'd be using a sticking charm. So um, we are going to hot glue this if I was going to be using this. So say you're going to cosplay with this broomstick servicing kit. I would use E6000 glue on this and then just tape over the area while it's gluing. So then that way um, it's more of a permanent bind. Because I do feel like with the hot glue you will probably be able to pull it off if you really wanted to. Just because this is a metal surface. But again if you're just going to use it as a display purpose like me the hot glue will be just fine. But if not, you may want to use the E6000 glue just to kind of make it a little bit more secure if you are going to use this for, say, like a cosplay. So I'm going to put a little bit of the hot glue here on the end of the leather. Fun fact, today I'm using a Dollar Tree hot glue gun because I just wanted to see how they actually worked and see if they get my seal of approval. I have... I can't even tell you how many hot glue guns I have. My sister claims I have a problem. I don't think I have a problem. I think I have a collection of hot glue guns that I use a different gun for each color because I find that if you swap your glue gun out for every different color, you waste a whole lot of glue. And I'm, I'm not about wasting. I like to try to keep stuff for as long as possible and get the most use out of it. Um, I don't want to be wasteful, especially when it comes to craft supplies. So, um... I thought, you know what, for $1.25, we will pick this thing up and see how it does. And I'll be honest, so far, um, it's a pretty darn good glue gun. It's just as good as the generic brand ones you'd get at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. Surebonder is still my favorite brand of hot glue gun. But uh, if you are just looking for an inexpensive hot glue gun, especially if you're using it for different colored waxes and things like that, I would definitely say that the Dollar Tree hot glue gun is is totally, I mean, for $1.25, it's totally worth it. But um, yeah, it heats up really well. I feel like it works just as good as the higher priced ones. I mean, some of those cheaper guns at Michael's and Hobby Lobby are still 5 to $7 or more. And, you know, honestly, they work the same as this one, and this one's $1.25. So I'm definitely going to be picking up a few more. Just because it's always good to have a hot glue gun around. If you get any excess glue like this one, I'm going to let this dry and I'll be able to just pick that right off. But it gives us the little clip-on, or buckle-on in this instance, compass for our broomstick. The next thing we're going to do is create our handbook of do-it-yourself broom care. Again, I... Uh, did not create the inside writing in this, um, and I don't think the person who edited it 
did either. I think they might have just compiled the information or found it and just re-edited it. Anyway, I will put a link to that in the description. Um, but I was like, you know what? It's readable. It all makes sense. And um, it was made to be a handbook of do-it-yourself broom care. But I didn't care for the cover that was on it. So I went ahead and created a new one. And then, like I said, I gave it um, an inside page that was the nice marbling um, as well. And this is printed double-sided. And I did print it on this really great, like, parchment-y looking paper. The top one, I actually did a piece of cardstock. But the rest of this is this really nice parchment paper. So we are going to be using a long reach stapler today. And if you don't have a long reach stapler, you could um, measure it out, poke some holes and push the staples in by hand. It's not an easy process. You also could stitch this. So you could sew it up with a needle and thread. But we are going to be using the long reach stapler today because they are so much easier. And honestly, it's not that expensive and they're, they come pretty handy. So I ordered mine on Amazon. I'll put a link to the to this one in the description down below. The only thing about the particular one I purchased is I feel like the um, ruler on there is a little wonky. I don't feel like the measurements are accurate. But as long as you know where you want it to staple, you can just pre-line it up. You can move the slider to that particular area and do it that way because I do feel like the measurements didn't really line up because the center of this should have been at five and a half since this is 11 inches long and it is not it's actually at like almost six it's kind of weird anyway so I just pre looked at it um, I'm using some clips I got at the Dollar Tree to just kind of hold everything together to keep it all lined up and we're going to put our pages in it will stop it where I lined it up and that takes it right to the middle of our book here and I'm going to do three staples on here I think and you always want to do your cover face side up so then that way um, the nice side of the staple will be facing out okay so we've got our three staples on here and now it's really easy. You just fold it along that stapled line. Make sure that the sides are lined up so that it's not, you know, crooked or wonky. And then once you get it folded, you can then use a bone folder or a side of a pen, whatever, to really press everything out and give it a good crease. So now we're going to cut the excess off um, to make sure that we get a nice clean look of our book. I'm just using a ruler and an X-Acto knife. It's important to have a fresh blade. Um, I like to use this style when I'm doing something like that just because I can snap off the end on each cut if I wanted to. And it's pretty cost effective and isn't going to um, mar up the edges of your pages. One side note, some of you may be wondering why I'm cutting more than just the white edge off of this. And that's because I printed this top sheet on my inkjet printer on a piece of cardstock. Well, my inkjet printer has different margins for the outside than the laser jet that I used for this for the printing the inside. So because of that, I wanna make sure I'm not gonna have like a bunch of hangover on my marble, etc. And I figured out that if I cut just to the outside of this black edge, um, the inside will line up correctly. So we're just gonna do that. So in case you're wondering why I'm cutting so much off and not just the white, that is why. But if I would have printed all of this on the inkjet printer and it would have lined up, it would have basically just been taking the cream color off of the edge. If you have a paper cutter that can cut through that many pages, by all means, go ahead and use it. But most people don't have that kind of paper cutter. I know I don't. So I'm opening this up and I actually need to take just a tiny bit more off so that that marbling page doesn't have any more white edge on it. Okay, and as you can see, we have our really great handbook of do-it-yourself broom care. And it is fully readable. And on the back, it does talk about everything that comes in our broomstick servicing kit. 
So I have the clip-on compass, the Fleetwood high finish handle polish, the polishing rag, magically enchanted to stay clean. I have some tail twig trimmers and then the handbook of do-it-yourself broom care. So um, I just thought that was a fun addition to the back of this just to kind of give people an idea of what all is in their broomstick servicing kit. So again, it's gonna be all of these things. And then our fun scissors that are going to be our um, tail trimmers. And this pair of scissors has a phoenix on one side and a dragon on the other. So I thought that was kind of fun. Um, but I thought that these looked very much like what I would think some twig trimmers would look like. So the next step is we are going to cut a piece of cork out. And this is the um, adhesive cork sheet that I got again at the Dollar Tree. I love that it is adhesive on the one side and that the bottom is cork. So we're gonna cut this out so it fits perfectly into the bottom of our box. Now you could just cut this out and stick this into the bottom of the box and call it a day, fill it with your items and be the end of it. We're not gonna do that. We're actually gonna line it with fabric and I'm actually gonna be using the cork side down so I can glue that to the bottom of the box. And we're gonna use the adhesive side to help us stick the fabric to it. Um, we're also gonna use that fuse tape as well to stick it to some foam pieces we're gonna stick in there to give it a little bit of a divider situation. But all I did was measure out the bottom of my box and then I put um, some marks here where I need to cut. So I'm just gonna cut this with my X-Acto knife. You also could do a straight edge line and just cut this with scissors. But um, if you didn't have this adhesive cork board, you could just use a piece of cardboard, cardstock, anything like that. You would just have to um, either put some spray adhesive on it or some, a bunch of the fuse tape, something to just help it stick to the fabric. Okay, so now that we have a good fit, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do the fabric. Before we do the fabric, we are going to create some dividers with our dry floral foam here. And I'm just gonna be using a kitchen knife to cut it. You could use one of the actual foam cutting knives if you need to. It's really not necessary, just use even a butter knife. But I wanted to create a couple compartments that would just kind of separate the items from each other. So I wanna do a piece of foam on the ends and then one in the middle so then that way the handle polish and the rag is in one section, the scissors and the compass are in another section. So again, there's gonna be a divider, divider, divider. I've already kind of measured this out and I pre-cut my pieces. So I've got my little wedges here and I'm just going to place them in. Okay, so before I get much further, we're gonna make sure everything fits okay. So I want the polish to fit here. scissors fit there and obviously this will be glued in so that it won't move and the compass will fit there so yeah and then the little rag will go here the book will go on top of everything so that fits good so now at this point we're going to lay that out again on top of our cork and I'm actually going to glue those pieces or stick those pieces to the cork with the adhesive and see if I feel like that sticks it enough. If it doesn't, then I'll go ahead and add hot glue. But then we're gonna use that adhesive to stick our fabric. So at this point, I'm going to take my remnant fabric. And again, I picked this up at Hobby Lobby for a couple bucks. And we're going to cut it long enough that it will go over all of those ridges and then wide enough that we can just use the tape to kind of fold the edge down so we have a nice seam. So I'm gonna just pre-cut the fabric um, enough and then I'll show you how we're going to actually get all of it to go together. Okay, so one thing I recommend when you are cutting velvet like this is to have a lint roller handy. It will help pick up the little pieces that get left behind while it's being cut. It will make sure that your fabric is clean once you are done. So highly recommend a lint roller just to kind of help clean up your space. Okay, so now that I have this rough cut and obviously it is wider, than the bottom, and that's because I wanna be able to create a fold over for like a seam, so then that way it's a cleaner edge on the sides. So I purposefully left it a little bit longer because we're gonna use that fuse tape to kind of shore it all up. But before I do this, I'm actually going to peel the backing paper off. We're going to adhere our pieces of divider on here, so then that way we can um, start to stick our fabric to it. Okay, so I'm going to peel the backing paper off of this, and I'm going to see if I feel like this adhesive is gonna be sticky enough to adhere the foam to it, it, 
It might be. This is pretty decently sticky. Okay, so I'm going to start with my end piece here. Okay, and I think that's pretty good. So I'm going to push these down really good. And yeah, they're on there. So awesome. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is use this peel and stick fabric fuse tape and um, fold up the edges to kind of give it like the illusion of a hemmed edge. And um, Danny from Wizardry Workshop actually showed this product when he was making his wand boxes. And I thought it was genius because I hate doing a lot of sewing. My sister's fantastic at it. I know a lot of you probably are as well. However, it's not really my shtick. So being able to fake hem it is right up my alley. So I'm going to use the backer board here to just kind of give myself an idea of where the edge needs to be. Okay, so I'm just going to pull a whole length of this out. So I'm going to go ahead and fold this side over. So you just press it down really good. And then you peel up the other edge of the backing paper. And then I'm going to fold this over. And as you can see, I have a really well stuck down edge. So now we can do the other side. Okay, and that left us with a perfectly faux hemmed looking piece of velvet. And then like I said, have your lint roller handy to just kind of keep it nice and clean and all that. So now I have our little bottom piece we made here and I am going to cover the top and the sides with the same tape. So I have covered all the edges with the tape. I haven't pulled the backing paper off yet but I'm going to go ahead and do that now and that'll give us a fully adhesived area for us to stick our fabric onto. Okay so I couldn't get the adhesive backing to pull off the side pieces without completely pulling the whole piece of tape off. So I just left them. Now the top ones I was able to, it is a slow process and I did kind of carefully push the sides down a little bit. So then that way the top does have the adhesive, which I think will be fine because as long as the tops and the bottom has the adhesive, we should be good to go. So now we're going to take our fabric and I'm going to carefully place this, I'm trying to figure the best configuration for me to actually see what I'm doing with the camera. But I'm going to carefully place it and then just start to drape it over. Definitely not easy to do on camera. So as you can see, I got this like nicely roughly set and I don't mind the little edges here I know that's where my hem was I, I'm fine with it um, I just wanted a nice looking interior on the broomstick box now I knew that I had some excess over here so I'm going to end up cutting that off and we've got our little divided box out here that is stuck down nicely with the adhesives And now I can put this in my box. And honestly, I may not even need to glue this in here because I have a feeling the fabric is going to keep it snug in place. So I don't know that I'll have to glue it, but we're gonna put it in and find out because if I do need to glue it, we definitely will. Okay. Let me get one side nicely in.
Okay, I'm gonna be honest, guys. I don't even think I need to glue this. It's pretty well in there. It's not moving around. So yeah, that gave us a super easy divided out box. It's got a nice upholstered edge to it. Now, you definitely could do another piece of cork on the sides. I, I'm not going to, but you could if you wanted to give it a little bit more of an even finished look. So I'm gonna go ahead and load this up. So we're gonna put our scissors in here. And our little compass, which you could really lay either way. Because once you lay it in here, it will flatten out. So then that way it won't be as springy once everything else is in the box. Put our handle polish here. And that fits nicely with our little dividers. And then for the polish cloth, like I said, I just picked this up at the Dollar Tree. I tried to get as many things from the Dollar Tree as I could. I did order the scissors off of Amazon, and I'll put a link to those in the description. Um, and I did get the other stuff mostly from Hobby Lobby. But uh, just was trying to make this super affordable, but really nice. The foam was all from Dollar Tree. Like I said, that adhesive cork was from the Dollar Tree. I did get the uh, shoe polish from my local grocery store. Okay, so we've got our little polishing rag here, which I'm going to try to put on the bottom of this. And if this one is too fluffy and won't work, I actually have a backup one. I really like how fluffy that one is, but I thought it might be tricky to get into our box unless I was to lay it on the top of everything, which you definitely could. Um, so I also picked up this three pack of microfiber cloths that were black at the Dollar Tree. So I'm going to go ahead and use one of those. Okay, so this I should be able to fold to fit in here pretty easily. Okay, so we've got our little cloth in there, and then our polish can just go right on top of it. And then we have our book that can go right on top of all of that. And there you have it, our broomstick servicing kit that when we open it up, has our handbook of do-it-yourself broom care, our handle polish, our polishing cloth, our clip-on compass, and our twig trimmers. This will be a great addition to our prop collection we make along the way, or a nice addition to a cosplay costume. So if you guys like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do so, and we will catch you guys later. Thanks so much.